Music has died. His five decade long songbook transformed our culture and his life's message became part of the history of our nation. During many important historical events in history, there was one man who sang through them all. From the Second World War to the Civil Rights Movement, Keith Seeger inspired and communicated to people through his expertly crafted songs. Peter Seeger was born on May 3, 1919 in Manhattan, New York. It could have been predicted that Pete Seeger would go on to be a famous singer. His father, Charles Seeger, was a musicologist and his mother, Constance Seeger, was a violin instructor at Juilliard. Seeger's father had many friends who were influential folk singers, so Pete was influenced by all of them, including Woody Guthrie, who went on to become his mentor. By the time Seeger was 19, he had already quit college so he could travel with Woody Guthrie and perform with him. In 1940, Seeger started a music group called the Almanac Singers, where he was the banjoist. This group was composed of himself, Guthrie, Millard Lample, and Lee Hayes. By the time the Second World War came, Pete Seeger was already a well-known singer, known for his informal and personal folk style, and his audience participation in his shows. He would sing and play his banjo for the enlisted men of the war as their personal entertainer when they were off the battlefield. He even sang for Eleanor Roosevelt on Valentine's Day of 1944, only one year before the war ended. When the war was finally over, each almanac singer went their separate ways. In 1949, Pete Seeger and Lee Hayes wrote If I Had a Hammer in their new group called The Weavers. If I Had a Hammer was written in response to the rising labor movement. The labor movement was a series of peaceful protests that were led by labor unions in search for more reasonable work hours and better wages. If I Had a Hammer became sort of an inspirational anthem to the people who were fighting for their rights to a better workplace. Pete Seeger was doing great in every way. He even helped found Sing Out magazine, which he then made the cover of later. By 1955, Pete Seeger had already enjoyed success and a series of hit songs. He then released his newest song, Where Have All the Flowers Gone, in response to the rising Vietnam era. This song discusses how young women would pick all of the wildflowers in the fields to lay by the graves of their husbands who died fighting in the Vietnam War. The Vietnam War was the America's war against the communists of Asia versus the anti-communists of Asia and America as the allies. It was a long and bloody battle that lasted for about 20 years. During the war, signs of communism were being shown in America. Senator Joseph McCarthy took up a project that was responsible for searching for communists in the USA. Seeger and Hayes were soon blacklisted though for being part of the Communist Party. The pressure of this soon caused the Weavers to dismantle. Seeger then disappeared from the music game until the mid-60s when one notable event caused him to return. During the late 50s, the times were changing. People were starting to realize that the African American people didn't have as many rights as those with lighter skin colors. In 1955, the one and only Dr. Martin Luther King Jr took a stand during the Montgomery bus boycott, which was the resulting consequences of a young woman of color named Rosa Parks' imprisonment for not moving seats on a bus. After the bus boycott, Dr. King started marching, publicly speaking, and peacefully protesting for black rights. Meanwhile, Pete Seeger was still accused of being communist because of his membership in the Communist Party, which he had given up in 1949. He was even sentenced to one year of prison for this. Seeger was only jailed though for a few days though before being bailed out by Paul L. Ross, Seeger's lawyer. But he still didn't write any new songs until 1962. On May 1st, 1963, Pete Seeger's most prominent song was released to the public. This song was called We Shall Overcome and it was written in response to the civil rights movement. This song became a huge success everywhere. 
It was even deemed the anthem of the civil rights movement, and it was given much publicity at the time. One of the most popular times when this song was noted was on one of the most famous marches, the March on Washington. This song was an important part of Dr. King's speeches, and it was even sang by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. himself, along with the entire crowd of people who were marching alongside him. We shall overcome. Deep in my heart, I do believe we shall overcome. No, I join hands so often with students and others behind jail bars singing it. We shall overcome. Sometimes we've had tears in our eyes when we joined together to sing it, but we still decided to sing it. We shall overcome. It was even sang at committees that got together to discuss upcoming protests. Pete Seeger's motives weren't corrupt, though. He wrote this song to help the African American people and to assure them that he was on their side. But I'm a big fan of Dr. King. He achieved things that no one believed he would achieve, anybody could achieve. I mean, for, for a long time, people had been trying to uh, break down segregation and Jim Crow in the South. And uh, it was absolutely miraculous what he did. And I'm only wishing that other parts of the world would study his techniques. In 1965, the Birds released one of their most famous songs called Turn, 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 which was a remake of one of Pete Seeger's most famous songs. It was considered an anthem of the changing times and to this day represents America's great social change of the 60s. After this, Pete Seeger then moved on to the newest chapter of his life. Living in Manhattan, he had begun to observe how filthy the Hudson River really was. This made him decide to write a later song called My Dirty Stream, also known as the Hudson River Song. After writing this song, it had opened up his eyes to realize how the world really needed to change and how action can start at the grassroots level. He started the Hudson River Sloop Clearwater, which took volunteers, school children, and even summer campers from around New York and New Jersey to come and help clean trash out of New York's most important river. Seeger would either ride along the river in his boat and sing to the helpers while they worked, or he would get in there and help clean trash up as well. The charity still exists today, and it is an important effort to maintain the Hudson River's wildlife, beauty, and cleanliness. Pete Seeger died on January 27, 2014, at age 93 of natural causes, but he still lived on through the ways that he was able to sing for our rights as people and as Americans. He was a great example of somebody who communicated through history, for he sang for the freedom of Americans, sometimes even at his own cost. Pete Seeger's unique form of communication inspired us to peacefully protest in order to make meaningful change. His trademark style and his simple yet meaningful lyrics are often still used today. Pete Seeger was truly an example that shows everybody that even a musician can move mountains with only his banjo and his voice. Although Seeger may be gone now, he will always live on through the peaceful example that he set for our country. And I was strolling, the wheat fields waving, and the dust clouds rolling. The fog was lifting, a voice was chanting, this land was made for you and me. This land is yours.